Hello, and welcome to the second episode of Nikkor Store's Flashlight Lore. Our first episode, The Origins and History of Candela, premiered a couple of days ago, and no one really said anything. Actually, the few people that did were quite kind, so I shall endeavor to critique myself. Crocky, would you get a lot of this cow? Why my self deprecating voice in my head has an Australian accent? That being said, I was raised in the 90s on a steady stream of movies and television. So prepare yourself for a sequel that will milk whatever goodwill is left from the original, completely abandon the core concepts that made it good, add more explosions, alienate the fanbase in a vain attempt to appeal to the masses, and give the black guy more snappy catchphrases, in a move that surprises no one. The sequel to Nikkor Store's flashlight lore, Candela 2, colon, Revenge of the Lumen. If you are a flashlight enthusiast, you have seen it everywhere. Boxes, Facebook posts, advertisements, poorly translated Asian takeout menus. If you want to buy a flashlight, you do not get a choice. All hail the mighty Lumen. The manufacturers will shove this number in your face. Not to be confused with Lumen, which is what they call bathroom attendants in England. Why do I keep writing these jokes Americans probably will not get? <sighs> Eviction rates are at an all-time high, idiot. We gotta get our shit together. Lumen is an SI-derived unit of luminous flux. It was defined by the CIPM in 1946. Remember those guys from the last video? Comité international des poids et mesures. They define the lumen as new lumen, a unit of luminous flux. The new lumen is the luminous flux emitted in a unit solid angle, steradian, by a uniform point source having a luminous intensity of one new candle. Of course, New Candle was the original name given to the Candela, similar to how Puff Daddy abridged his name to P. Diddy. Thus, one lumen is equal to the product of one Candela and one Steradian. From there on, you can derive these other equations. Lumen, which is phi sub v, is equal to iota sub v times omega. Now, the omega symbol is technically for solid angle and not Steradian. It's kind of like how a square is a rectangle, but not all rectangles are squares. A steradian is a specific type of solid angle. But bear with me, I am in the process of front-loading the exposition so the punchline really sticks. Another equation is phi sub v is equal to 2 pi iota sub v, open parentheses, 1 minus the cosine of apex angle over 2, close parentheses. Now, as an oriental who fits the stereotype, I like to imagine myself to be fairly confident in the realm of arithmetic. However, it was at this point into my research where I felt betrayed, and like the growing storm of nervous apprehension of a dog in the back seat as you pull into the parking lot of a veterinarian, I was filled with trepidation and indignance. I ejaculated, you lied to me, you traitorous wench. This does not look like math. Where are all the numbers. These buttons don't exist on my calculator, so now I cannot cheat and pretend to be smart on the internet. These aren't even English letters. I have so little experience with Greek. So, ignoring the equations for a second, a very simple way to visualize the relationship between Lumen and Candela is thusly. If you have an isotropic source of light, like the sun, it evenly generates light in every direction. No wires, no little screwy part of the bottom of a light bulb, even in every direction. For the sake of argument, let us say that it has a luminous intensity of one candela, the rather weak sun, like second string defensive tackle on the B team. That was very embarrassed, never came to the middle school football games. Either way, no matter where you are standing relative to the source, you will always be witnessing one candela. Even if you block half of the side of the sun, Every position on the opposite side will still be projecting light that would still be equal to one candela. Because remember, candela is luminous intensity of the source. In contrast, lumen is the total quantity of light that is being emitted by that source. So, if we go back to the same example of the sun that is only one candela of luminous intensity, remember, lumen is candela times steradian, which is a solid angle basically a three-dimensional angle. It just so happens that a sphere is 4 pi steradian. So it would be 1 candela times 4 pi, which is about 12.57. And like in the previous example, 
If you blocked half of the sun, the candela value does not change, but the lumen value would be halved. So immediately, you should be able to intuitively see how both of these values do not provide enough information to give you the full picture of what to expect from a flashlight. So far, we have only been talking about isotropic light sources, where the light is distributed perfectly in every direction. But, we are also aware that this is not always the case with flashlights. For instance, if you had a flashlight with a very bright hotspot in the center would spill along the sides, which is rather common in long throw lights. Let us imagine this in two dimensions to help illustrate. If you were standing here, witnessing the spill light, versus if you were standing here witnessing the hotspot in the center, the luminous intensity, or candela, would most certainly seem very different to the two observers. So, do they take an average to derive candela? It would not necessarily matter even with an average, because the average of 9 to 1 and the average of 6 to 4 are both 5. So if the hotspot was a scale factor of 9 to the spill lights 1, or a scale factor of 6 to the spill lights 4, the averages would be the same, but they would still be vastly different lights. Furthermore, the ANSI PLATO FL1 methods, in which they standardize the metrics of how these numbers are reported, they just measure the brightest point, which is usually the center of the beam. So, say that I was a very unscrupulous individual. I could stick a cheap laser pointer in the middle of a very basic AA flashlight. The beam profile would look like a movie sniper was aiming while his spotter was spraying a can of Lysol next to him. Then I could slap that on eBay and say, this baby's got a six-figure candela value. And it would not be technically wrong. Thus, is Lumen any better? Could we glean any more morsels of information off of it, unlike the coy mistress that is Candela? My answer? Like the young man who was asked by the tailor if it is uncomfortable while measuring his inseam, yes, but more so because you asked. Lumen tells you the total light output. However, it is dependent on the steradian, which would be roughly the complete beam profile, which is mostly dictated by the reflector and the finish of the glass in front of the LED. So. You could have the same 1000 lumen flashlight such as a Nikkor MH12 GT or a 1000 lumen headlamp such as this Nikkor HC65. Allow me to make a quick demonstration. First, I will place the MH12 GT, mark the point where the light exits and place a rough outline of the beam profile. Next, I will align the HC65 lens as close to the exit point of the MH12 GT and then place a rough outline of its beam profile. Now, even this unofficial comparison allows you to quickly see how the HC65 has a far wider beam profile, and thus you can infer that the density of light will probably be lower because it is spread across a wider angle. I will now demonstrate the real-world implications on this piece of subconscious advertisement. First, I will hold the MH12 GT parallel to my camera lens and shine it on the letters. The higher density of light washes out the message. Next, here is the HC65 held relatively the same distance away from the MH12 GT, right next to my camera lens. And this time, the message is still legible because the light does not wash out the text. So, we can learn that, although the total amount of light output or the lumen value is the same, because of the vast difference in the beam's profile, the density of light that you would see illuminating your work surface would be vastly different. Thus, with both lumen and candela values hand in hand, you could estimate the relative beam profile to expect from a flashlight. If you allow lumen values to be constant, as candela goes up, steradian must come down. Inversely, as steradian values go up, candela values will go down. I hope you enjoyed this brief tour of my corona isolation induced solacistic ramblings. I had so much more information prepared for this video, a breakdown between radians and steradians and how they all fit together into the lumen equation, and the history of devices developed for measuring luminous flux. However, I am trying to aim for around 10 minutes in runtime for these videos, so I promise I will return with hopefully more exciting and insightful flashlight lore in future episodes. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the Nikkor Store YouTube channel. If there are any topics in the field of photometry or flashlights in general, please leave a comment for future topics you would like to see covered. Thank you.